Yeah, welcome to the Edu Growth uh, Channel. For learning purposes, we are here to support one another. We are here to learn from one another. As we facilitate learning, we learn from you, you learn from us. I'm here with my colleagues. Um, maybe I will introduce them as we start. But uh, before we get into the lesson, it is important to recognize that it is God who has enabled us to reach another day or to get to another time when we are going to have another session like we had last week and the other weeks. So uh, let us just thank God and pray that this meeting goes on well. Let me request one of my high school students. Can you imagine? High school student. How many years ago? I think, when did I leave high school teaching? Um, almost 10, 10 years ago. Uh, but rather, which class were you? Form two. <laughs> As in which class? Which class? As in which the which class did you graduate with? Twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. That is a, yeah. That is from four. Yeah. Awesome. So kindly pray for us. I'm so proud to uh, have you here. I can't. I wish I could thank just you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let us believe and pray. Heavenly Father. We come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of, and nurture the bonds. And it is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we believe and pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. I, I think the teachers in the room are learning something that. Uh, when you are a good teacher, your students will continue connecting and connecting and connecting. Yeah, and sure. Yeah. Thank you so much, Esther, for joining the meeting. Uh, we will catch up after the meeting. I want to know what you're doing. Oh, my goodness. I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So in the meeting, I have... Uh, uh, several facilitators, but I want to request... Uh, Fanwal to say hi to us. Yeah, good evening, uh, good. everybody. Good evening, Fanwal. It's a good Sunday evening here in Nairobi. And uh, great to see, I've seen already one representative from Nigeria mm -hmm. and many different places. Thank you to have you here today. Uh, it's always a place where iron sharpens an iron, that when you come here, you're already an ion. So there's some impact that you're doing in your respective uh, sphere. And so mm. we come to sharpen each other. Learning never stops. And that's one of the core um, mm. mandates why we are here, that we can learn to unlearn, to keep learning and to impact. I think that's the, uh, that's the climax of it all, that we can have a way in which we share our knowledge to other people and they will also pass the same to yeah. Thank you so much. I look forward to have a good time here today. Awesome. Thank you, Farnwell. I don't know, is Charles in the room? So open it up. I might be too Yeah. Okay. So today is 23rd. And I want to talk about waste management, but go specific to one, that is reuse. We've been talking about um, education for sustainable development. Those of, of us who are coming or joining us for the first time, of course, I know we are coming from different nationalities. I want to appreciate each one of you because we have participants from different countries. Already, Fanuel has talked about Nigeria. We have participants from Zimbabwe, Botswana, uh, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Canada, 
uh, the United States, uh, the United Kingdom, uh, so Sudan, South Sudan, Egypt. Um, which country am I leaving out that is already in the room? Um, let me see. Yeah, I hope, yeah, the others will be joining us because of the difference in time zones. So sometimes the meeting gets some people off, maybe they are in the middle of the night sleeping. But I appreciate the fact that uh, those of us who have joined the program or are friends to the program have been consistent. And I believe it's because you are learning, you're gaining something. Remember, I've always said that um, learning is lifelong, and that is sustainable development goal number four, that learning should continue as long as you are living. You should never say no or stop learning at any given time if you have the opportunity to learn. Some people grave to have such opportunities, but they don't get them. So when you get the opportunity, when you get the link and you see it is something that can help you or that can help you be, uh, be, be, be of help to your community or to others, join in and just learn because knowledge is non-rivalry. When you get it, you have it. And if you have it, when you share it, when you are spreading it out, it does not reduce from you. It doesn't, you don't become lesser of what you've given out. Instead, you, be, you get even more because of the insights and the encouragement that you receive from the people you share this knowledge with. So the moment you come to this platform to learn, one of our mottos is to share. Share, sharing is inspiring. So share as much as you can. The little things that you learn as you do them, try to ask your neighbor, try to ask your, your student, your teacher, whoever, to try them out. Because we, 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 we want to take you through learning that is experiential, learning that is practical, learning that can help you to be engaged in something that you can do. And so those of us who have not attended any of the learning sessions, it is important that I introduce to you what Education for Sustainable Development is. And so Education for Sustainable Development is education that enables us to meet our needs today without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. And in the process, you have to take note of the social, the economic, and the environmental spheres of sustainability. As you talk about economic sustainability, social sustainability, environmental sustainability, then you are talking about sustainable development. If you are focusing on one area uh, without considering the other two, of spheres or pillars of sustainability, then that whatever you're doing is not going to be very strong and it's not going to last for a very long time. And the reason as to why we have the Edu Growth for Sustainable Development platform to learn from is because we want to inspire sustainable change. We want each one of us to purpose to look forward to transformation in whichever way, in whichever little way that you can. And so in the process of learning, you need to purpose to mad, make a difference and go beyond the obvious. And as you do the things you do, as you do the little things you do, you are opening your hands, rather you are open to give because if you give, you receive. So give love, get love. And the triple L, I will always remind you, stands for lifelong learner. Purpose to be a lifelong learner all the times. Learn, inspire, lead. Each one of us looks forward to growth. 
And as you get into growth, it means you become a leader or a better leader, an excellent leader as we go on and on and on. And so if you have to become that excellent leader, you need to learn, inspire others for you to be able to lead them well. And focus on results all the time. When we are talking about education for sustainable development, we don't want to stop at knowledge. We don't want to stop at just getting to know. We want to get to know, believe in what we are, we know, believe in what we are learning, and go down, use the hands, the head, the hair, the heart, and the hands. So for, for sustainability purposes, it is important to enjoy the process of learning so that it is very easy for you to take it to the hands for you to do it practically. That is why I said whatever we learn here is supposed to move forward to not just knowing, but doing something about the knowledge so that you can make a difference in your community. And as you do the things you do, always wear, work with excellence and never ever give up. Whenever we are learning, even if, uh, we are talking about the same subject, consider it forever new. And if you consider it forever new, you will be able to, to be open to the knowledge so that you can learn something new from what is being presented by our facilitators. And uh, for us to be able to impact, it is important to do small acts of kindness all the time. All the time, if you have to reach out to someone, uh, you need to show them love, you need to, to purpose to share, you need to purpose to be open. Those are the things I'm talking about. Every day, do something that shows that you are kind to someone else. And if you do so, we are promoting Peace, be peaceful at all times. After this, do something new. Yeah, do something new. And when you get inspired and you think like this is something that you can do to make a difference, don't procrastinate. Don't say, I will start tomorrow. Do it now. Yeah, do it now. Many of us have been dreaming of being great leaders in the world, in wherever we are. We've been dreaming of doing great things. I want to encourage you to live your dream, go for it. Because if you don't go for it, nobody else will do it for you. And as you go for it, always ask yourself the question, what if, ask what if. Anytime you are faced with a situation or a challenge that needs some solution and you don't know how to go about it, ask the question, what if, and fill the gap, then do that thing and you'll be able to see uh, uh, the difference that you will be able to make. So today I want to focus on reuse of waste, reuse of waste. So I, I want you to use the chart, using the chart, can you just uh, list down the things that you call waste. Anything that is called waste around you, just list it down. Uh, Farnwell, Brother Farnwell, I want to request that maybe you assist me to read what has been written. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so far, one person says that is Patrick Ochieng that uh, waste is uh, used plastics. Yeah. Monica let's Moses. Let us. Mm -hmm. uh, waste is paper. Another mm -hmm. person says used plastic bottles and then tires. Uh, someone says food, food refuse and used mm -hmm. plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, leftovers. Uh, that is from Lucy Joroge, and then Peter says that uh, used polythene, 
Florida Maritime says it's electronic equipment, clothes, shoes, papers, etc. Uh, another one says it's pills, used plastics, water. Uh, Priscilla says it's used paper, bottles, cooking remnants, and then cuttings from wood. And then Margaret Shiholo says it's pills from potatoes. Um, Nyansimera Kemunto says it's packaging bags. Emmanuel Kiamati says examples of waste include scrap metal, scrap metal, I think that's the, what you wanted to say, scrap metal, plastic, broken wood, old computers. Rose says uh, examples that will include kitchen waste like uh, food remains, waste paper, used plastics, animal manure, old clothes, old computers, old cars, used oil. Uh, Florida says also food remains and then uh, someone called HP. Its kitchen remains. Okay, stop yeah. there. Thank you very much, Panwa. So, what we are simply saying when it comes to reuse waste, it is waste from this end. And if you look at these lines, the, does the color change? Does anything change? It is just twisted to be used in another way. And it is still beautiful. Yeah? The waste that you can reuse, it is going to be reused in the same state it is, but in a different way to make life more meaningful. So that is what we are going to focus on today. And so I want you to identify ways that can be reused at home, in school, and in a bus. We've just generally looked at waste. Now, can you list down waste that you think can be reused? Can you list down some of the things that you think this is waste that can be reused? And finally, go back and read what has been written, please. Uh, yeah, kindly pardon the carry. Yeah, maybe you read what he, whatever has been written. Okay. Um, the chat. Yeah, chat. Okay. Uh, we have some more, some more feedback. Uh, someone also says waste includes uh, used bottles and papers, used clothes and plastic soda bottles, clothes and tissues. Uh, an additional uh, to it is that uh, plastic bottles and straws, uh, cartons, containers, paper, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. Jacqueline Otieno, plastics, paper, food, sewer water. Uh, Dr. Timothy Kilonso, renewable paper, plastics, polythene, glass, metals. Uh, someone says water bottles and bottle tops. Another says nylon papers, wood chippings, plastics, metal containers. Dr. Nduku says treated water, especially in factories and tannery. Treated water also for, for watering clothes, containers, and plastic. Pistachio shells, button beads. Uh, recycled textiles, plastics, metals, glasses. Water used awesome. for washing clothes. House, awesome. Yeah, quite a awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Those are the things that you can reuse, meaning that you can use it in the same, I mean, that's as it is, without changing its form. Yeah, because when you get into the point of changing its form, it means you are recycling. So we are not talking about recycling, we are talking about reusing. And so from here, I will want you to practice reusing waste to produce valuable products. And I will want you to enjoy working with waste by adding value to it. You know, sometimes we look at waste like ah, trash. You know, it is just what you have been using that has now looked like trash and you feel like you cannot touch it. But now we are saying, from today, when it comes to reuse, we are going to enjoy reusing waste 
to produce valuable products. So I want us to look at uh, rather to to watch this short video uh, briefly. I want us to watch this short video briefly. And uh, we'll see this is. There's a video here I want us to watch uh, so that we can see what we are talking about. I want to start sharing a new screen. Where is it? A Uh, a minute, just give me a few seconds. Are you seeing the video? Not yet. Manuel, are you able to see the video? Yeah. Um, I'm seeing no. you on there. No, doctor. No? I'm not sure to see the movie. No, the video is not there. Just a minute. Um, It's a very interesting video I wanted us to watch. But uh, I don't know. It's... Stop sharing. Let me stop sharing. Then I share again. Yes. That's on. You seeing my shared video? Yes. So yes, no it's visible. Fanwell? The audio is not there. Are you seeing that video? Every year, yes. 8 yeah. million tons of plastic are dumped. Yeah, yes, we can yes. see yes. Okay. No sound, though. There is no sound. You can share audio down there. to endure 
because it was man-made and we put it into their environment. The record is 276 pieces of plastic inside of one 90-day-old chick. If the plastics are in the food chain for the dolphin, they're also in our food chain. Exactly. Communities are built on these landfill sites. So sweet potatoes, corn, sugar cane, all growing on 40 years of garbage. Do you have anything not wrapped in plastic? No. No. <laughs> we have to make our life better for our kids' children. Change is possible. It starts with us. Yeah, that that was about um, plastics. When they get to the waters, the animals in the water um, get uh, they suffocate because of what we put, as in the waste that uh, we just throw anyhow. Because you don't have to throw the waste directly to the water; it has its own way of getting to the waters. Because when it's raining heavily, for instance, and you've thrown plastics anywhere or everywhere, these plastics will eventually get to the waters. So uh, the challenge of waste is something that we all need to be concerned about. Because it is not just about one country or two countries. It's about everyone. It's about all of us because we generate a lot of waste as a globe. The world generates 2.01 billion tons of municipal solid waste annually, with at least 33% of what extremely uh, conservatively not managed in an environmentally safe manner. And then when we talk about plastic pollution, we are talking of approximately 8 million tons of plastic waste that escapes into the oceans from coastal nations every year. This is the equivalent of setting five garbage bags full of trash on every foot of coastline around the world. And then when it comes to food waste, around 1.3 billion tons of food is wasted each year globally. And yet we have people who are dying because of hunger. And this food amounts to one third of all food produced for human consumption. Then we have electronic waste. Globally, we have 50 million tons of electronic waste that are produced every year and only 20% is formally recycled. The remaining like 80% often ends up in landfills or informal recycling sites. Now, how, how do these plastics affect marine life? How do these plastics affect uh, animals that are living on land? For example, some of us are domestic keepers. We have cows, we have goats, we have sheep, we have chicken. I mean, how does this, do the plastic papers, polythene papers, plastic containers affect their, their lives, especially if they take them by mistake or they eat together with grass? I mean, and then we also need to talk about a carbon uh, footprint of waste. How does it affect uh, the entire atmosphere at large? It is important for us to talk about the economic impact because if you look at the masses that we are calling waste, how can this waste be transformed or be translated to, 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 to improve our economy? 
how does West pose a challenge to our living as people socially? When you see garbage everywhere, how do you feel as a person? When you are in a bus and you are seeing somebody throw garbage out of the window or throw garbage on the floor of the bus or wherever, how do you feel as a person? So in essence, we are talking about waste issues that we all need to be involved in so that we look for a way that uh, we can be part of the people making a difference by doing something small. So where did I get the reuse? Reuse is one of the seven arts of sustainability. It is important for us to get to understand that before reusing, we have to think about two things, refusing and reducing. So you can refuse to make it, to have it as waste. Yeah, you can refuse. So refusing means choosing not to use or choosing not to buy a product that is harmful to the environment, that is harmful to humanity, or that is not necessary. For example, declining plastic bags at a, a, a grocery store and using your own reusable bags instead. That is one way of refusing, yeah? So if you refuse to buy it and bring it to your house, then it will not be there. And so there will be no such like thing like waste. You understand? If you cannot refuse, then reduce. Reducing means minimizing the amount of waste generated and resources consumed. For example, how can we reduce energy consumption? We can reduce energy consumption by, uh, by turning off lights when they are not needed or reducing water usage by fixing the leaks. Our taps sometimes leak. Instead of allowing the taps to continue leaking, because if you let it leak, that is waste, the water is going to be wasted and you cannot fetch it back for you to use it again or to reuse it uh, in, in, in a meaningful way. So the best thing to do is to minimize wastage by being keen on how we use the resources that we have. You can minimize the usage of plastic containers for example, if you must buy a water bottle that is plastic, instead of buying a 20 a five liter container, is it possible for you to buy a 20 liter container? You will have reduced waste from the environment because this 20 liter container is big enough instead of it being thrown away as waste, it can be reused as a container to plant vegetables, to plant flowers, to plant herbs, and so on and so forth. And so that brings us to the third R, which is reuse. Now, the meaning of reuse is using items more than once before discarding them to another R. You understand? Before them... Uh, getting to the point of uh, recycling, you can use it again and again and again. So that is what we are calling re we are calling reuse or passing them on for further use. For example, you can use glass jars from store bought products as storage containers or planters. You can use this um, the, the the big plastic containers as we uh, we were saying as planters as well. You can reuse clothes, yeah. You can reuse clothes. How can you reuse clothes? Instead of throwing it away, 
you can give it someone else to use it if you don't want to use it. And then that brings us to recycling. Now, what is the meaning of recycling? Recycling simply means processing used materials into new products to prevent waste of potentially useful materials. For example, plastic containers can be recycled to become a gas. They can be recycled to be to become rubber or something. They can be recycled to become uh, reusable bags for shopping. Like that is what we are having here in Canada. The shopping bags that we have are recycled plastic containers. We can also repurpose. Repurpose means adapting an item for a use different from that for which it was originally intended instead of throwing it away, yeah? For example, you can turn an old ladder into a bookshelf or using old tires as garden planters. Uh, uh, sometimes we say rethink instead of throwing it away, rethink, repurpose, use it uh, differently. That is what we are talking about. And then finally, we have reconnect. Reconnect means engaging with natural systems or community efforts that aim to restore and protect the environment. So reconnect, instead of um, uh, just calling it West, reconnect with the importance of what we are supposed to do so that you do it to save the environment, to save the animals, to save people and every other person. So why are we talking about reuse? Remember I've always said in everything that you do, always start with the question why. Because the why question is the golden question. The moment you have your answers to the why question, then everything else will get into place. So why reuse waste? We are talking about reusing waste because reusing waste reduces pollution, it saves energy, decreases the demand for new resources, and of course, it's a win-win for both our pockets and the planet. And so if you look at this one as R, reuse, you will realize that you can make money out of reuse. You can save money out of reuse. And so the economic pillar has been taken care of. And if you reuse, instead of throwing it out to the, to the environment, to the waters, you have saved the environment. So the aspect of the social pillar, social sustainability has been taken care of. The economic sustainability has been taken care of. And of course, the environmental sustainability. So how do we reuse? I want us to watch this video again, a different video now, so that we see if we can try to do this. Let me just share this so that we can follow together.
mathematics. Just an example of how you can reuse plastic bottles. Beautiful, isn't it so beautiful? If you give this to our children, they can make and they can sell. You know, they can make money out of and yet, what is inside? A waste bottle. Yeah, so that is it. So this is just to tell you that it is possible to get something beautiful out of waste. So don't just call it waste. Because if you become creative, if you, you, you become a critical thinker, it is possible to use the things that we call waste to have very beautiful things that we can use in our houses or we can even sell. Because Education for Sustainable Development inspires us to make use of locally available resources to make a difference. Yeah? So you don't have to, like, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, there's another one here. Let's just watch because this lesson is very short. Oh. Another one here I want us to watch. Um. So, let me, let me, okay, let me, let me say, uh, because I have to navigate through many windows to get to, to share the video, just give me some time. Um, Four ways of waste management. The environmental condition highly depends on the way you manage it and the way you deal with your waste. Waste management is the prevention, generation, monitoring, handling, treatment, residual disposition, characterization and reuse of solid wastes. To know more about better waste management and creating a better environment read in this section.
There are various types of solid waste, for example, farming, municipal, commercial, residential, institutional, and special, sewage sludge, healthcare, household hazardous wastes. Usually, the word pertains to individuals' materials which are created by human activity. Besides, the operation is generally carried out to be able to decrease their impact on the environment, appearance or health. It is vital to understand how to conduct waste disposal. In the realm of today by which population is rising and thus is quick industrialization, waste materials created are a well-liked trend. Proper getting rid of wastes helps with maintaining your atmosphere free from pathogens that create illnesses and maintains it eco-friendly. Listed here are four techniques of appropriate waste management that may help you to keep your environment clean. 1. Recycling Probably the most anxiousness of waste management, recycling isn't pricey also it could be easily conducted on your part. When you perform recycling, you'll be able to avoid wasting sources, energy, and thus, it will help reduce pollution. Also, you might cut costs whenever you recycle. Various materials that may be recycled include aluminum, plastics, glass, and papers. If you want to lower the waste materials volume, among the best ways you should do is to recycle. If you select recycling, you can eliminate tires, asphalt and batteries in the waste materials also it stops them from being into the incinerator and landfills. The town of virtually every city motivates its citizens from taking up recycling. So, be among these responsible citizens and reduce your waste through recycling. 2. Composting Composting is the natural process that is devoid of any dangerous by-products. The procedure includes the break lower procedure for materials into some organic compounds which may be utilized as manure. You might perform composting within your backyard. When composting, you can use grass, twigs, leaves, and add vegetable and fruit skins and peels. Soon after days, you need to realize that the types of materials have decomposed. You might employ this compost that's wealthy in nutrients so they can improve the soil in your garden. What you're adding into your compost also has something to do with composting. The following steps help you start with composting and know what materials you should and must not include in the process. 1. Build a bin for the compost. Though you can still successfully compost within a pile on the ground, using a container will keep the whole process neater, and it helps in putting off animals when you include food scraps in your composting process. Based on the bin's construction, it may also aid to regulate the temperature and moisture. Excellent minimum pile size is at least 1 cubic meter or 1 cubic yard, but the pile may go more significant than this, while smaller scale composting could be allowed to work. 2. Fill the bin with a balanced mixture for most excellent results. You may include the following into your mix. Green stuffed nitrogen for activating the heat process within your compost. Brown stuff carbon to act as the fiber for the compost. Other items that could be composed that you might not have considered before, such as paper bags, paper towels, eggshells, cotton clothing, hair, human, animals. Utilize all the items moderately. Air. This helps deal with the smell produced by different bacteria. Anaerobic compost can attract files that you do not want in your yard. Water. The pile must be around as damp as a sponge that has been squeezed out. Temperature. The compost pile's temperature is extremely important and is a sign of the microbial activity of the process of decomposition. Starter or soil compost. It is not firmly necessary, yet recently completed compost between layers could aid to introduce the right bacteria to begin the composting process a bit more quickly. When you are getting weeds, the soil that is left on the roots might be sufficient to serve the purpose. 3. Mix of layer various materials within the container so that they could come in contact with each other. Also, with this, you will be able to prevent any big clumps. Particularly avoid compacting together a large volume of green materials, as they may quickly become anaerobic. 4. Turn the pile regularly, at least once each week or two. 5. Decide whether you will add slow rotting materials such as twigs, hedge clippings and sturdy branches, wood shavings, wood pruning, and wood ash. 6. Know the things you should not compost. 7. Harvest the compost. When all goes well, you'll eventually find that you have got a layer of beautiful compost at the bin's bottom. Take this out and have it spread out on or dug into the garden beds. Start composting today and make better earth by starting in your own home. 3. Landfills. Waste management by the effective use of landfills includes the effective use of a large area.
The area is excavated and will also be full of waste. Next, the region is going to be hidden using soil. Landfills are unsafe given that they release gases, for example, methane which is very risky. You mustn't execute waste management with landfills whenever you can't guarantee safety means. Landfills should be lined correctly as the waste mustn't make contact with the neighboring areas. 4. Burning of waste materials. Should you can't recycle or when there aren't any ideal places for getting landfills set up, you might burn the spend created in your household. Controlled waste burning at extreme temperatures to create steam and ash is a perfect waste disposal method. Combustion considerably lessens the waste volume to become disposed of. Besides, solid waste offer for that alternative and continuously available source for creating energy with combustion. Such energy might be channeled into functional purposes. These okay. are a couple of... Yeah, uh, I thought it had a clip on reuse, but, uh, but still we have learned about composting, reuse, uh, recycling and all that. So there are many ways we can reuse waste. There are many ways we can reuse waste. You can always go to YouTube and uh, Google. There are very many ways. There are very many ways we can reuse waste. Now, making and creating something useful from used materials, uh, it means you are adding value to trash. I want you to try out I want you to try out something with plastic in your house or paper and just try to make something out of what you are calling waste. When I was growing up, I used to see my cousins make very nice flowers using their old exercise books. Like they roll one page into another, into another, then it becomes this beautiful round flower and they color it, you know, and then they hang uh, in the house like nicely. So there are very many ways we can reuse waste and we can start today. Now, when do we reuse? Reusing not only helps us reduce waste, but also extends the life cycle of the products. Conserving resources as well as energy. So when we are talking about when to reuse, we are supposed to think about anything that can be reused should be reused. Yeah? Anything, maybe, maybe we need to, to say this together that anything that can be reused should be reused and not thrown away. So anything that you can reuse, please reuse. Who is to be involved in the reuse of waste? When we come to the point of thinking about who is supposed to do this, we are talking about everyone, individuals and households. Everybody in your house should learn to reuse, yeah? Everyone, uh, virtually everyone. If any of it is that container that you've just uh, uh, finished using, let's say you are cooking oil from, before you put it in the garbage bin, ask yourself, can this be reused, yeah? That is what we are calling rethink. Rethink, can it be reused? If it can be reused, how can you reuse it? If you cannot reuse it, can you give it to someone else who can reuse it and teach them how to reuse it? And then we have businesses and corporations. We have educational institutions, government agencies, nonprofit organizations and uh, environmental groups, waste management industry, uh, we have designers and manufacturers, like the video that you saw, that was a designer. And for you to do such like a thing, you have to be a critical thinker. You have to imagine something beautiful out of waste, out of what you are calling trash. 
And then we also, we, we even community leaders and local organizations are supposed to be involved in reuse. So if there is a way you can teach your community how to reuse, uh, for example, plastics, because we have not been able to be successful in doing away with plastics from our environment. Most countries are still using plastics. I was so surprised to find that even in Canada, we have so much of plastic. We have so much of polythene paper, you know, if there is a country that will be fast to 100% do away with plastics, that will be an excellent country in this world. I don't know, is there a country that has tried to do this and has been successful? Among us, any country? Any country? Anybody can share, for example, Kenya. What have you tried doing? Yeah, Daktari, I think I think Kenya we have uh, we've tried a lot. Uh, though we still we still we still have miles to go, but the burning of uh, plastic bags, I think it's something that we can celebrate. Uh, though not hundred percent, but we have done a lot, uh, and we are doing more. Yeah. Um... Yes, yes. Uh, may I share? Uh, yes. I mean, in Uganda, mm -hmm. I have seen women groups that collect straws, drinking mm -hmm. straws, and they make mats out of them. The Whoa. mats they can use to, to sleep on, mats that they can use to sit on. So, yes, I've, I have seen some kind of reuse of plastic. Awesome. Mm. awesome. That is Uganda. And those masks must be very beautiful, I think, I guess. <laughs> yes, they are very beautiful and colorful and very colorful. Awesome. Thank and they you. also make bags. Mm. Bags? Bags, bags. Oh, bags. Shopping bags. bags. Yeah, they, shopping yeah, bags. bags. Yes, they also make shopping bags. Awesome. From the straws. Mm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Any other country that has been, seen you reuse of waste in their country? Yes, Dr. Yes. Kenya, again, I've seen uh, some institutions mm -hmm. and some, some entertainment joints using bottles to come up with their fences. Uh, I've gone to some schools and they have used those bottles. Uh, they have you know, most schools, especially public schools, do not have fences. But I've mm -hmm. seen schools that have used those bottles to make their fence. And they end up even using the same fence to learn, either mm -hmm. to plant flowers, uh, to, to, to even plant some vegetables. They, they have used those bottles for some learning uh, engagement. In the in the hotels and entertainment areas, they do not throw away the bottles. Mm -hmm. They use the same bottles. Some of them use them for their own purpose, or they resell those bottles to some charmers. Like in my church, we have a group groups of women who go to collect those bottles from the entertainment joints and they have come up with the, the, the county government gives them money to buy animals and so they use those bottles because they do not have gadgets for measuring their milk so they use those bottles to sell their milk and therefore the bottles remain useful thank you Awesome, awesome. So in essence, we are saying there are some materials like uh, uh, metals, glass, and most pl plastics that can maintain their integrity and can be reused multiple times. So it depends on, uh, on our needs and creativity. Creativity has to get into it as much as possible. So let us encourage our children to try reusing, 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 
uh, in actual sense, I wanted to request you to come with a, a, a bottle, but I forgot <laughs> because I wanted us to do an activity, a simple activity of making something out of a plastic water bottle uh, so that we can share uh, the experience, how you feel after the whole activity. Yeah. So uh, because I didn't do that in advance, let us talk about the challenges and solutions of reusing. What are some of the common hurdles of reusing waste? Manuel, can you help me to lead in this session? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we are let, talking let about me... challenges. Yeah. Let me start, and then probably we could uh, we could also have some interactions, and people can share whatever the challenges in their places, uh, maybe in school or even in communities. Mm -hmm. I think the challenges, especially what I have uh, have experienced in my community. Is a culture mentality. Uh, you always walk uh, across a river, and then you see a specific example, and it's not a good example. I where I I frequent, especially for some for some ICT programs that I do. There's a river. It's just a you know this this Nairobi stream is not really a big river, and then. Many times you'll see someone as uh, was making some skumawiki. Uh, skumawiki for those who are non Kenyans is kale, I think. And so they have they have uh, prepared their vegetables. And those sticks that remain, someone looks at the other side, and even others don't even look. They just throw it, and it has become such a mentality that that it's not it's not like a big deal for for that to happen. And then. Uh, there is a lady also who prepares fish at that very place. And you just hear, see her doing the scales, removing the scales, and then just throw, dumping them in the in the river. Downstream, you find that uh, there's a big blockage, so the, 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 the flow is not very smooth. And then that's the place where children love playing. So it, I think it's just a culture mentality. Um, if people would understand that the impact... The, the, the magnitude of whatever they do, it will it would be very instrumental in just creating a new dimension of managing the West for that matter. So one of the things according one of the impediments in my thinking is a culture mentality. And mm -hmm. but I think also other people could have a new uh, uh, other uh, proposals to the same. So let's maybe look at uh, what do you think are the impediments uh, from a school's perspective if you are a teacher. And then maybe in your community, we can open it up to other people to give their views. In the meantime, I'll also be reading whatever people are written here. Okay. Uh, you can allow people to talk. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, may I say this is Susan from Uganda. Yes, Susan. I think in the school environment, mm -hmm. it is lack of sensitization and lack of commitment from schools, from school administration regarding the environment, environmental protection. Um, if the schools, they do not have any systems of collecting um, garbage, for example, or garbage disposal, or synthesizing of learners and teachers, and probably even the nearby community because learning goes up to community level. So it is in the schools, the problem is with the, with the leaders, the school leaders, and in setting up systems on protecting the environment. If they do set up those systems, um, I'm sure the learners will follow through because there's, I remember there's a project we worked on with British Council, and um, one school actually started working on 
environmental protection and they started uh, reusing plastic bottles, as you are saying, reuse, and they made school um, dustbins or for every class. So there, there was a deliberate effort to reuse the to 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 to, to clean the compound, and they were using the plastic bottles. They made dustbins for each class and for the school, and they had a, a proper garbage they had proper garbage collection proper garbage disposal so it's got to be a deliberate effort by school leaders thank you wow thank you very much yeah i think i love i love that approach and perhaps maybe at some point you would uh, we would also be interested in knowing what we are planning to do at an individual level or maybe at uh at the school level as a teacher because uh, the action is would be important. Okay, let's hear from someone else. That is from Uganda. Any person probably in Kenya or even outside, what has been your experience? The challenges <clears throat> in the West. Can, can, can I come in? Please do. Hello? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, Baraki. Yes, Baraki. Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, from Ethiopia. Almas from Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, actually, it starts from home. The, the way waste is disposed is not uh, properly managed and uh, children are not taught, so they don't practice it when they go to school. So I agree uh, that school leaders, teachers and uh, students also need a proper awareness or uh, mentality about uh, keeping the environment uh, or having a, a safe environment. So when um, garbage is collected, it's just collected, not even uh, uh, managed properly. The, you don't uh, separate the plastic from wood or from metal or what have you, or you don't separate from uh, what could be recycled and what not. So uh, I think totally uh, what we need in our schools and what from my observation is, we need to have a proper um, awareness about waste disposal, about recycling, and about what you are just discussing, sustainability. That is a, a very big issue that should be looked in, 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 in the schools. Thank you. Awesome. Wow, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Any other? Can I contribute? Yes, yes, go on. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation, Dr. Keep it up. I'm Benjamin Kilonzo. So the issue of sensitizing the community, me, I want to look at it in this way. If we entrench the way we manage waste in the and the try to use it, maybe in schools. I want to believe there are those days when we invite parents to come to the school for their meetings. And I want to believe if the teachers, the school management, and the students or the pupils have, be, have been practicing how to manage that kind of waste by using it, one of the key activities when the parents come, in addition to their meetings, they need to be taken around to see some of the products which have been creatively uh, developed or made out of the West. And the parents should be encouraged to engage their children back home to reuse the kind of waste they are also coming up with at home. And if we do that, I want to believe there's a way uh, children can influence, schools can influence the community to change their attitude towards this management of waste. Thank you.
Thank you, Benjamin. Fanuel, are you there? Yes, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah, continue. Uh, yes. Any other person? That's awesome. I think well, one thing we are realizing is there is always our position at some point, our individual effort. And I think that's what we should be um, gearing to and hearing what is the waste management plan that we can put up for, for our... I mean, for a way of making the world a better place. I like what Alma say. It has to start from home. Well, any person, any other person to to add to the contribution? Hey, could I could, could yes. I also uh, make a proposal? Yes, please. Uh, I, I see the, the issue of uh, the management of waste and recycling actually uh, um, could get a boost when we include the. Uh, like uh, the, the other stakeholders who understand it, like let's say the people who are championing for it, even the schools, speaking up and giving feedback so that it is entrenched in policy and uh, and uh, like regulation. Like uh, uh, Dr. Christine, you remember in Kenya, the one time we succeeded to get rid of uh, the plastic bags is when it was made law. And mm -hmm. if you are to you are found with the plastic bag, it was actually punishable. I think you're even being arrested. And within a few days, plastic bags disappeared. So I think uh, if uh, we could include also the issue of uh, uh, punishment and uh, rewards, especially rewards, and of course using the law, because uh, we have this culture mostly, especially in Africa, is that what, what, what will go wrong if I throw that uh, plastic anywhere? What will happen to me? If there's no consequence, it doesn't matter. But if we mix in the issue of uh, reward sanction and actually entrenching it in policy and regulation, the consequence, uh, uh, I believe we can uh, succeed better. Thank you very much. I remember there's a recently, I think it was uh, the start of this week, there's a friend of mine who was arrested by the county police. And what happened is uh, at, in the evening when he was uh, preparing to close his shop in town, so he had uh, washed his hands and a few things, and his shop doesn't have a sink. So he threw the water out. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, now the, the policemen were passing by, and they arrested him. So when I went to the station, and asking whatever was the problem. And then I'm like, you know, that is a violation of the Environmental Act. And I realized that's a big thing. Uh, just throwing water in a howling that you have finished, uh, maybe washing up your hand or something, it's it's a crime. Uh, yeah, so I think just, just lack of awareness and just pushing through until uh, something becomes entrenched into the policy, like, like a law, as you have said, Dr. Terry. I think that's a, that's a plus, it, it takes time. But then with time, the society comes to appreciate that we have to follow some laws to make the, the environment and the world a better place. Perhaps, let's see, is there anybody who is involved in a, a program or an activity of waste management? Maybe we can hear, we can learn a few tips from how you're doing, probably even at school level, at work level. Is there any among us? Yes, yes. May I share? Yeah, please, please. Yes, this is my sister Benta, Kenya. Uh, I want to share particularly about organic waste management. We have involved uh, some young people. <laughs> Sorry, let's mute that person. There's somebody who is... Uh... Okay, continue. Yes, we we have um, involved some young um, people in the organic waste management, whereby they are enjoying because like the seeds we are collecting together and then planting. And, you know, other things like peels or whatever, um, uh, you know, uh, that uh, can be decomposed, is decomposed, and then this is manure. So they can, uh, they're also selling this idea back at home. So it is very, very useful and it is sustainable in that they enjoy also these uh, fruit trees growing. And uh, we are encouraging them that you see, these ones you're using today, somebody else planted them. So uh, this one we are planting, you will use or some people also will use it. So apart from enjoying how, various kinds of fruit trees are growing they're also using the manure 
So this is very, very interesting and uh, I see them embracing it. Thank you. Awesome. Ah, lovely. Yeah, Dr. Ari. Yeah, that is awesome. Thank you so much, Fanel, for taking us through that session. Uh, I think we are learning. There is learning happening. Um, here in Canada, the idea of segregating waste, it's like, it's like a culture. In every institution, you'll find the garbages, uh, the, 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 the garbage bins written clearly that this is for this, this is for landfill, this is for organic, this is for plastics, you know. And one thing that surprised me last year, we went to the beach uh, during summer. That is the only time you can go to the beach. We went to the beach and joined the rest of the public in a public beach. And at the end of the day, there was no garbage. As in people after using whatever you've used, you've, you've carried food, you've carried uh, things you are cooking at the beach, you know, after you are done with your, your, your enjoyment, you collect all your garbage, put it in, um, in, in a, a plastic, uh, rather a bag, and then there is somewhere where you will go and, and put it at the end of the day. I was surprised, you know, I was seeing people carry their garbage. When people leave a site, the site is clean. And at the end of the day, there was not even one little pepper. So imagine, and that is a public beach. I'm wondering if we can get to that level to be such, to be organized, to know that it is us, it is me, it is me and you to take care of the environment. And so let's carry forward this spirit of uh, wanting to be innovative, wanting to be part of the people making the difference by taking care of the environment, by making use of what we can use again. Remember every small action counts towards a larger change. So start today, start small, whatever small thing you can start in your house. Like now in my house, everybody knows that you have to separate waste. Because if you take the waste outside, the, the, the people who come to collect garbage from our doors, if they find that you've mixed garbage, they will leave your garbage there. Yeah? If it is paper, it has to be paper. If it is plastic containers, it has to be plastic containers. If they find a paper inside plastic containers, they will leave your garbage there. Just to teach you a lesson that you did not segregate your waste properly. So you will have to stay with your waste for another one week before they come again for you to have corrected that mistake. So it is something that we can learn. It is something that is doable. We can do it. And so I want us to commit ourselves to at least something that we are going to do after this, this session to make a difference. Let's say you don't do this in your house. Can you go and try, instead of having one uh, garbage bin or dust bin in your house, in the kitchen, can you have like two so that you have one for organic waste and another one for these others, you can add another one for plastic containers. You know, you can have three. Can you try something small like that? And then you try to see in that, in that bin of uh, organic waste, can you look at it again so that now you can go and make your organic manure decompose so that you can use it in your kitchen garden? In that garbage bin of plastic containers, is there a plastic container that you can reuse? Yeah? So commit yourself to do something. And so I want to thank you because you have been so wonderful today. Let us carry this spirit forward in our daily lives. And remember, 
to do small things at a time, at a time, at a time. And now I want us to get to the point of reflecting. Uh, uh, Janet, I am trying to implement what we did in TPD. What went well in this presentation or in this learning session? Anybody can say, what do you think went well and what needs to be improved? We are reflecting, we are reflecting. Anybody can <laughs> say something? Um, Susan is saying something. Hope yes, I'm Susan. not speaking too much. Yeah, I think okay. the present <laughs> I think the presentation went so well. It is very relevant for school leaders and teachers. And um I've really, really enjoyed it. Um my wish. My one wish for the videos to make their videos more, more relevant to Africa. Mm -hmm. For example, when we were looking at um, composite, making composites, there are ways where the way we do it here in Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, to give examples that are more relevant awesome. to Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. That was. Yeah, two hands are up. Manuel, uh, Florence, let's start with Florence, then Benta. Florence Hello. Zembatia, yes. Yes, uh, this is Florence Zembatia. Uh, I, I want to concur with Susan, I'm also from Uganda, mm -hmm. that the presentation was very, very good. But uh, what I also want to wish is that the selection is home. At the same time, I would wish that they are sorted before the presentation so that we don't lose time, that time of selecting them and searching for them. Okay, thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you, Sembatia. Then now, Benta. Thank you very much, Dr. Chari. The presentation was um, very educative. I, I, I liked it. Well, I had a suggestion that perhaps maybe we could suggest a few things that um, each one of us, you know, thinks or has in mind. Uh, just for example, I was saying like us here in Kenya, we could know each other and then maybe we can also benchmark with each other you know come to my community you see this i come to your community you see this and then what can we do otherwise i see that we are getting somewhere with it thank you awesome thank you very much thank you very much anybody else we are locking out uh, Yes, Kilonzo, and then Joshua. Uh, let me appreciate the presentation and also the the way you have used various approaches to bring out the issue of how we need to manage or to reuse the waste. Uh, I I want to request that um, if we could have a padlet. Mm -hmm where we can go further, share mm -hmm. what individually, what the institutions we are working in, mm -hmm. what they are doing towards what you have presented. Awesome. We share more, we synergize. Mm -hmm. So if you can bring in something where we can post what we are doing, where all of us can go there and see what different individuals organizations are doing will strengthen this program. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. In actual sense, that is what I was thinking about, but I didn't want to ambush you. Like today we are going to have sharing. So kindly just prepare. I will announce we will have a Sunday for sharing our success stories or sharing what has been done or what we know. So you can prepare 
a, 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 a presentation. You can have photos on a, a slides. I will give you um, the opportunity to share so that we can learn from one another. Thank you very much. Joshua. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ari. Uh, the presentation was very good, very good. Uh, personally, what I would wish for is uh, maybe for us as participants to be more engaged uh, so that we don't just listen to the uh, conversation from your side, but uh, engaging us at, uh, and even at some point, we can even have break, uh, breakout rooms and uh, break out into some rooms and uh, discuss those matters, then we present them. I think it would be more engaging. I don't know whether that is possible thank you very much madam yeah that is what but that is possible that is what we usually do except for this presentation <laughs> we've been going to breakout rooms and uh, we will continue we'll continue it's only that i thought this is like a one suit it is reused and uh i didn't want to keep you here for long thank you thank you we'll improve on that Okay, so that brings us to the end of uh, our session today. I shared two links. One is to join a WhatsApp group for Education for Sustainable Development. It's a global group. Feel free to join. And the other one is to register. I need your, your details so that uh, when I will be doing the certificates, I've gotten a uh, a charitable organization that uh, can assist us get recognizable certificates from Liberia so that each one of us can get a certificate for participating in these learning sessions. You never know when I will need that certificate in future. <laughs> So please register yourself and uh, may God bless you. So we've come to the end. Who can pray for us? Are you inspired? Esther Baraza, your hand was up. Sorry. Nicholas Osira, I'm also seeing your hand is up. Can we take a few seconds each? Yeah, Nicholas? Yeah. Yes, thank you, Dr. Ari. Mm -hmm. Mine is to thank you for the uh, wonderful work you are doing. Uh, personally, I work in a tertiary institution and the mm -hmm. principles you've so much articulated, I find them very much relevant. And it is something which we can also think of uh, uh, implementing now that the future is about sustainability. So I want to thank you in a special way and uh, my We lost you, Osir. Something happened? Is it my end?